Hi everyone, welcome back for this final episode of the Voyager Airship Formula 1 Design Challenge. Last time we left off with a redesign of the rear wing, and basically this time we're going to do the same, only with one very big difference. This time we're going to make it compliant with the FIA regulations. Last wing was actually not compliant, it was sticking out of the design defined by the FIA, which are the ones that you see here. So all of this design, by the way, has been done by Luca Padovani and Andro Rack. Super impressive what they have done. He recreated the design spaces or the boxes that the FIA created, and you have to stay within these boxes to have um, a wing that, that conforms with the regulations. So he drew these boxes and then drew a new wing, completely new design of the wing, with two variations within these boxes so that we would comply. In this video, he actually slices through the design front to back, so you can see here what the wing is made of on the inside. Uh, we'll do a second one, you can see the thickness and the wing elements. And if you go for the Y slice, you can see something very similar here. Where you see the cross sections, first uh, those re regulation volumes, and then you can see the cross section of the wing. wing. If I pause here, you can see that this bottom uh, part and the top part of the wing, they combine into one big wing element. Um, the reason for this is that you then feed some fresh air into this um, second uh, wing to the to the um, suction side of this second wing to avoid separation. If you wouldn't have this split line, you would probably have separation. This way, we can actually go to higher angles of attack um, uh, and postpone the stall and get more performance, uh, which is the end goal for Formula One: get massive amounts of downforce. Other things that Luca uh, implemented include a redesign of the um, rear suspension arms uh, if you go to the previous version so era update 4 we can see that this part of the suspension was actually kind of shaped as an airfoil um, to actually help kick up the air before it reaches the end of the diffuser and as it makes its way towards the lower part or the beam wing of the of the rear wing configuration now that one was actually a bit too coarse it, it features some separation locations if you go uh, and check it out in the pressure clouds um, you can see actually that these areas these red areas are our flow separation uh, we didn't get rid of them completely but we redesigned them or at least andrew uh, sorry uh, luca redesigned them and you can now see a smooth shape in that location uh, also redesigned are the uh, the drum wings, which are these aerodynamic elements which are attached actually um, to the static part of the rear wheels um, to help kick up the air, to help generate some more downforce. Um, they weren't working nicely uh, in conjunction with the diffuser geometry, so those were updated as well. And then we actually have two versions of the rear wing. One is what we call the biplane which is kind of like the Red Bull design where you have two element, two wing elements on top of each other here um, in the uh, lower part, the beam wing, beam wing of the rear wing assembly. Uh, and then we have the tandem setup, um, which is uh, the same top part of the wing here. Uh, but at the bottom part, you can see that we have uh, two elements of the wing here um, in tandem. So one right after the other, kind of similar to what we have at the top, uh, but less, less aggressive. So... If you compare the results, let's see. So on, on the previous design, uh, one of the problem areas was this transition of the top uh, or the second wing element uh, towards the first wing element. You can see that we have this gap here uh, to provide some fresh air to postpone uh, stall on the geometry. But where they meet here, that's, this is a very complex part of the geometry where you need to actually blend this second wing element into the side plate and then into one element where it joins the first one, uh, the first element of the wing. That's very sensitive. And we had some flat surface here uh, sticking out, causing separation. Um, we also had some separation here on the sides. Other than that, it was a pretty good wing, actually, but it was illegal, as we mentioned before. So now we're going to move to the new wing design, which is completely legal according to the regulations. Um, as you can see, we got rid of this uh, flow separation area. So really nicely done by Luca uh, to blend these 3D surfaces uh, into each other. Really difficult task. Um, we do have separation still here on the sides. Um, this is probably caused uh, by the proximity of the tire uh, to the rear wing. So that is something that could theoretically still be optimized. Uh, maybe change the angle of attack here uh, so that the natural flow pattern or curvature around the tires uh, is aligned a bit better um, with the side flanks or, 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 or the winglets of the, of the rear wing. We, of course, have big vortices. Um, there's lots of downforce at play here. 
but we do see that we have no separation here at the top part of the wing which is really really nice um, mainly due to this ventilation if you can call it that way uh, this slotted wing setup we also see that for this one the biplane um, we have good performance of the wing here um, at the bottom as well we see low pressure here for both the bottom and the top part of the beam wing of course you have to keep in mind that whatever low pressure you create at the bottom side of the top B wing, beam wing um, is also felt at the top of the lower wing so you see this low pressure here at the top of a wing which is not good you want to create downforce uh, so a suction effect will actually pull this wing part up which is not good so in general if you put wings too close to each other or on top of each other uh, you remember those old planes where you have two or three wings on top of each other um, if they're too close to each other they will actually start to cancel out each other's effect um, still, this one performs nicely, uh, so it was well done uh, by Luca, um, inspired by Red Bull. The top part of, of the wing, the main part here, uh, we, see, we can see nice pressure loading. We can see pressure fall off here towards the sides, which is normal uh, because you have leakage actually of the pressure towards the sides. That's why on, on conventional wings you have these side plates to actually reduce this effect. At the bottom, we can see the same nicely loaded wing here um, with a low pressure, uh, good suction effect here on the wing. Um, only towards the rear, we see that we lose some of this uh, low pressure effect. Um, yeah, that's normal. We're close to the separation area. We have this gurney giving the extra kick, um, trying to pull up the air even further. But altogether, this works really nicely. Um, if we then move to the second design, uh, which is the tandem configuration. Uh, if you compare mainly the uh, pressure map, you can see that this one has fairly good pressure buildup at the top. Uh, not massive, but it works well. Um, and we see that, um, oh, sorry, um, I'm showing you the wrong thing. We have the pressure buildup here at the top, uh, which is in the green area, which is a bit of high pressure, not too much. But we do have good low pressure on both of the elements. So not just one, they're not cancelling each other out uh, because they are in tandem configuration. And likely they're working nicely together with the diffuser. You can actually see this virtual extension of the diffuser by this beam elements or beam wings which means that the whole thing starts to act as one big diffuser the low pressure uh, behind this beam wing helps to further uh, accelerate the air underneath the diffuser uh, helping to improve the performance of the diffuser itself actually so that's quite interesting. If you look at the surface friction, then um, we can see here the surface friction streamlines uh, the effect that we discussed before. The air tries to spill over and takes the shortest, the shortest path instead of building a pressure here, just evacuate to the sides. Uh, air is lazy, if you can say it that way. Uh, this is normal. Uh, so if you ha would have side plates, you could actually counter this and, and improve the loading of your wing uh, but those are not present so you can see that the air tries to escape to the sides if you look at the rear of the wing uh, we can see more parallel flow on the inside uh, because they're they're blocked by the side plates which is good um, we can see some cross flow on the diffuser uh, so i'm not saying it's entirely detached but uh, there is some left right movement there um, but overall um, it all works well uh, high friction means that there is attached flow in most uh, locations um, which means that the entire underfloor here is actually seeing accelerated flow which nicely accelerates all the way to the end of the diffuser apart from this small bit of separation perhaps here and then continues to accelerate underneath uh, the beam wing um, so this is really interesting um, we'll probably see the same pattern here um, for the tandem configuration uh, slightly less um, or lower friction values but still still very good design um, nicely attached flow nicely parallel streamlines um, if we then look at the streamlines here in 3d uh, this is a new feature which we implemented after era update 4 so wh what you can now do is dynamically um, check this out and do this yourself by the way we'll drop the link to the public projects you can just move this, the source of the streamlines up and down and you can really see how this um, develops um, into a nice uh, wake behind the, the car as you move the streamlines up and down so really useful uh, to help understand what the airflow is like around a formula one car so if you do the same left or right you can see that the air gets kicked up in the middle and then as you move to the sides and you move outside of the wing you get uh, to see the streamlines going through this uh, massive uh, yeah, turbulent area around the wheels and so on also interesting to see if you look at the front here how the air uh, gets actually um, 
pushed around the tires you get these vortices and managing these vortices is one of the biggest challenges in formula one to see how the vortices of the wheels vortices of the wheels can be managed and, and, and turned around um in terms of numbers um so as we said before um this is now a a, a, a legal wing um, so that makes it slightly um, more interesting and more realistic. So last time we had for Air Update 4 a drag coefficient of 0 0.181, uh, 818. Um, this one has gone up, so we have slightly more drag, but we do have a lot more downforce as well, actually, around 10% more downforce, uh, what you see here. So we went from a lift coefficient of minus 2.25 to minus 2.5 on average, which is quite dramatic. We did lose a slight bit of efficiency. Our lift over drag ratio went from 2.7 to 2.6 on a bit more. Um, so there's a slight decrease in efficiency, but we do have an absolute increase uh, of downforce by around 10%, which is massive. So that would mean that um, for high downforce tracks with lots of corners and so on, uh, we would definitely go for this new setup. If it's a low downforce track or a high speed track uh, like spa franc Archant or something, then you would probably lower the angle of attack, make it less aggressive on the wing so that you sacrifice some of the downforce in favor of a lower drag coefficient or lower absolute drag value. So that's it actually in a nutshell that's the way we want to conclude this challenge so again a massive thanks to everyone who has contributed on our reddit channel uh, on our social channels uh, by sending sketches by sending new designs and by even implementing full 3d wing designs stay tuned because we're gonna start a new challenge which will be around the MotoGP. there's lots of stuff going on in MotoGP around the, all of the wings um, aerodynamics is, is becoming all of the rage there um, so stay tuned we will launch this soon um, and then you can also contribute there if you haven't on uh, the formula one challenge you can actually go nuts in that new challenge uh, just stay posted on our social channels and drop a comment below on this video to drop your comments on what you think um, the design is like how you like the design that luca and andrew actually made thanks like so thanks again for watching and hope to see you soon for the next challenge thank you bye bye